It occurs to me that the Father, in His grace, has given us a couple of these visible, tangible tokens of love. One is baptism. Our, our real participation in the crucifixion and the death of our Lord Jesus and a sign of our future resurrection with Him. The other one is the Lord's Supper. A real participation in the community of salvation and a sign. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 calls it a proclamation. A proclamation, a sign of the death of our Lord. We don't put a lot of emphasis on it, I suppose, but, but think about how visible and how tangible those elements of the Lord's Supper are, those, those created things that we don't imagine, that we don't have to conjure up in our, in our spiritual lives or conjure up in our thought life, but they are things that we handle and things that we taste. While they were eating... Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. I know that Jesus is not telling us that when we pray over the bread, it somehow is magically transformed into the literal flesh of Jesus Christ. But I do know that he is telling us that when we handle that bread, when we take it and place it in our mouths and we taste it, we roll it around on our tongues we're contacting something real. We're touching something that is tangible. And in that touch and in that taste, that, that feel on our tongues, the body of Christ has been made real to us. And it's almost as though we are transported back to the foot of the cross to see and to hear and to experience all over again the fatal agony of Christ's dying for us. And, and we're reborn. We are reoriented to what is true and what's good and what's right and what's powerful. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. And I know as well as you that when we drink from the cup, we are not drinking Christ's blood. But in that tangy, sweet taste of that juice that that runs down our throat and dries out our mouths and kind of burns in our throat, we experience something real. It's an experience of the lifeblood of Jesus. It It is the blood that drips from the body of this writhing figure on the cross, and we are there to hear the ridicule and to see the cruelty and to blush with shame at the the hatred that's directed toward the sinless Son of God, and we are renewed. We are reminded of things that maybe have grown dim over the past week. Uh, We're reminded of how much our God and Father, how much our Lord Jesus Christ loves us. 